Hello everyone. Welcome back to our second session on IPv6 basic to advanced where we are uncovering some of the design methodology for our IPv6 network. Focus for today's session is also on the changing paradigm shifts that are happening in enterprises, service providers, or a data center network where customers are actively considering IPv6 now. We have talked about some of the why factors in session one. And today also, we will be looking at some of those factors and we will be busting some of the myths that the business leaders or the network architects have in their mind regarding IPv6. So with that, you may be wondering what a broccoli has to do with our session. But believe me, I was able to find one connection where if you are somebody who is like a sweet lover or you like a lot of street foods or have a sweet tooth where you love lots and lots of sweets and if you visit any doctor they will advise you that in the longer run you should shift to a food like this or a green salad based food so that you can live longer now you may not be facing any issue now but still none of the doctor will recommend you to continue those food habits in the longer run and same is happening with ipv4 to v6 transitions as well where enterprises today they say that there is no issue that they are facing there are no real needs that they should consider ipv6 but in the longer run this is the only path for them to succeed or to keep up with the pace which is happening around these enterprises and that is what we will focus today that what are those market drivers that are happening maybe external to these enterprises but then they need to look at these changing market shift so before we get into our discussion there is one more analogy that i wanted to share with you and in fact uh, some of you may recognize this it's a old kind of a jeep model which was uh, successfully running in india for quite some time and people were using it for like multiple purposes and i had grown up in my family with my uncle who was a businessman and he was having one of these mahindra major Jeep where he used to carry a lot of luggage as well. When I say luggage, it was like goods his, uh, that he used to carry and supply to different markets. And over a period of time, his business was growing. So that means more and more goods that he was taking on this. My father being an elder brother advised him that you should upgrade this otherwise you may get into a trouble but he was like no this is running fine and i'm completely okay as of now we will see in the future and one day when he was carrying the goods this broke down in between and he has to spend the whole night on the road because there was no help available 
And then he realized that as the business was growing, as the requirements were growing, as the type of goods that he was taking in this vehicle was growing, he has to upgrade. And then next day, he bought a tempo traveler, which was sufficient for uh, his requirement in the few upcoming years. So what this story need to do with our IPv4 to IPv6 transition? Think for a moment that today, if you want to go somewhere, you can very well check on your cell phone the reviews of the location where you are going. Then you can use the same cell phone to book a ride for you. And when you reach there or maybe on the way, you can use the same cell phone to order food and pay for that food as well. And this is all what I'm telling from an individual perspective. So the handheld device that we have, there are so many of these applications, those are deployed on that phone without which we can't imagine our life, right? And this had all happened in the recent years. Another change, or if we shift our gears, towards, let's say, enterprises. Right. After the COVID, now in 2023, one of the key shift that you see in the organization is happening is return to office. And for that, business leaders' key priority is to magnetize the office experience. I remember I was talking to one of the enterprise customer and he was showing me his model of a smart building where there were so many of these apps that were there to enhance the employee's experience when they are in office. And if I wear my network engineer hat, all of them were like new applications which are running on the network, new type of endpoints, IoT endpoints, sensors for me. And what does that mean is that they all need this IP connectivity. So when this ecosystem around these enterprises towards enhancing the employee experience is happening from a network engineer perspective they need to think through this ip connectivity that how they will support this business model another key change let me give you one more example that enterprises especially in EVR, are looking at sustainability. There is a big, big focus on enterprises today where they want to save the power that is being consumed. And I'm, I'm just giving you uh, an example of power under this sustainability. There are multiple other factors as well. but Let's just focus on this. How can they save more power? Right. That means there are these smart ecosystem in that enterprise is needed, which can take the call when the employees are not there in the office and some of the infrastructure, which include endpoints, network switches, or other devices can be powered down or it can work at a reduced power. 
So all these changes that uh, I have talked now or in our previous sessions are pointing to the next gen IP, which is IPv6 in our case. So with that, the agenda that we will be looking at today is more background on IPv6, where we will look at some industry perspective. We will first sum up the myth that these business leaders have or the network architects have. One more thing that I want to talk before we look at this agenda point is that with 5G or advancement in Wi-Fi, the digitization pace has picked up. In fact, in India, there is a lot more emphasis on that. What that means is that there are more number of devices connected in the network ecosystem. There are very unique use cases that I read in some of the blogs, some of the presentations, where uh, which are, by the way, very interesting. But end of the day, if I just think from a network engineer perspective is, they all give me the impression that there is a more and more number of endpoints coming and being connected. For example, there was one use case where the presenter was talking about vehicle mounted telemetry, which involved many sensors which are deployed in that car and they all communicate over IP. So with that, let's just start our discussion. And this was the slide that we discussed last time as well in our session first, where IPv6, when any organization is thinking towards moving, they not only need to look at the network, but the whole ecosystem. Because remember, network is just one part of it. The applications has to be ready. And then if there are uh, other projects like migration to the cloud or there are some enterprise applications which are crucial for employees productivity how they are designing and monitoring their network right all these ecosystem has to evolve along with the infra and yes as with the security as well so yes if we are all like network engineers we may just focus on this but remember that around this this whole ecosystem also has to evolve whenever we are talking about this next gen transport network which is ipv6 and there are already some players which are ahead in this if it we have talked about the cell phones right the number of cell phones that had grown up right and more and more of these cell phones are powered by ip v6 right what does that mean if you are using a phone which is ip v6 enabled that means the device manufacturer has to support that for that cell phone. Then what all the apps or websites that you are using, those content providers have to support IPv6. Right. So when one endpoint is moving to IPv6, it looks for that whole ecosystem support 
to run smoothly so that's where the next point in our uh, slide is the content provider and in fact google is one of the example who is way ahead in its ipv6 transformation then you take the example of facebook as we discussed last time and other these large scale content providers they all support ipv6 and finally the enterprises they always look for their service providers so there are different mechanisms available where even these service providers can provide the ipv6 support to its and customers which are like enterprise in our case so if we look at the entire picture of ipv6 ecosystem we start from the end point operating system to the enterprise campus network which is somewhere connected to service provider and then it may be reaching to the internet so in this entire circle here what has to uh, what used to happen in the past is that enterprises were looking for the support of ipv6 but the endpoints were not supporting it there were very handful of products which were supporting ipv6 and not many service providers were ready for ipv6 the excuse from the service provider was that that none of the enterprises or not many enterprises are asking for ipv6 so why they should enable their infrastructure for ipv6 then the vendors were not building ipv6 products because there was no demand from the market and in fact on a side note this is what is happening with 5g but that ecosystem is also growing so you see this circle where one is looking at other and if the support is not there they are also not moving ahead so this need to be broken and this is what is happening now where enterprises whatever endpoints they have be it uh, in terms of operating system like it can be mac it can be windows or it can be linux they all support ipv6 their service providers support ipv6 there are stats which says that the more and more content that is there on ipv6 is increasing in fact i was looking at uh, cisco live 2023 which happened in the month of june where 51% of the traffic was on ipv6 which is a significantly good number so that means the transition is happening and enterprises some of them are way ahead in it and others are considering it actively and that is the reason we have created this series so that we as a network engineer also master the skill of designing ipv6 networks so with respect to the ipv6 drivers i have already uh, talked about some of them like uh, the operating system support the ipv4 address considerations because it is like that small chip which my uncle used to have and it cannot carry that load and uh, now in the upcoming slides we will look at some of the infrastructure evolutions those are happening that these business leaders need to consider and of course there is always a push from the government as well to move 
towards IPv6. We will not talk about this. There are multiple blogs around it and there is nothing much that need to be covered in this. So we will uh, mainly focus on around the infrastructure evolution. So regarding uh, the business leaders, I was part of many of these interactions and uh, the first questions that come is always start with the objections with IPv6 that we are doing fine with IPv4, why we need to go with IPv6 and in fact one of the funny answer that uh, I have heard in these uh, discussions is that they are going to IPv6 because they want to get their house ready for an unknown guest which is actually true if you consider the evolution of the network that had happened like right, around voice over IP or uh, the video services right that uh, the enterprises are deploying the network those were designed were not prepared for that type of service then we went with qos prioritizing the traffic because voice or video they are more prone to the latency, the cheater that we get into the network as compared to the data. But when initially we deployed uh, the network, the network designers were not aware about this. But this got evolved over a period of time. Right. So with that, uh, you know, not only for the unknown guest, now what I would say here is that we know some of those guests. We know what is happening in the market. And even these business leaders in the enterprises are analyzing those benefits and they want to be ready for that next transformation. Right. So this point I have already discussed around the mobile devices and in fact I am repeating it again and again because sometimes if the repeated informations that actually highlight how important the message is and one of the key takeaway from this slide that I want you guys to take home is that with your cell phone you can now take care of your work on the go as well. Right? It is not only for your personal comfort, but you can very well do the work as well because now it has sufficient compute capacity that is helping to take care of the work. Right? There are other changes those are happening around virtualization, containerizations, right, where now one host can have many of these VMs or containers and they need one or in some cases multiple IP addresses as well. If I talk about the infrastructure, during the start of this lecture, I have talked about return to office. That means the smart buildings. If it is a smart building for a network engineer, that means more and more number of devices connected to the internet. Right. Enterprises are now expanding their IT footprints in the OT network as well. 
where they have a lot of sensors with multiple type of use cases that they want to accommodate to increase the productivity or have new stream of revenues. And in one of the earlier uh, SR V6 session where I was talking about IPv6, I have mentioned there also that if there are business benefits that technology will get adopted in a faster pace. So with that, let's post this another myth where these business leader says, does my enterprise need IPv6 for business growth? Well, we have already covered so many of those business drivers. Here also, like if we say, we have covered these uh, certain points where there are such use cases which generate new opportunities for the innovations for these enterprises. And where there are so many of these endpoints that need to be connected on the network, and for that, IPv4 is not an option because IPv4, which have somewhere around 4.2 billion IP addresses, is not designed to handle so many of network sensors and the network. Now that I had given you enough reason from a business leader standpoint, now let's just look at the network architects standpoint. Some of the common questions that we hear during the discussions for IPv6 transitions from the technical team. So the one thing that comes out is that is IPv6 more complicated than IPv4? Believe me, after spending so many years in IPv6, it is actually easier than IPv4. It is just that we need to get used to it. Yeah, one difficulty that I see is normally the network engineer, especially in the NOC environment, used to memorize IP addresses of the devices. Simply log into 10.1.1.1, 10.1.1.100, right? It's all in their mind and fingertips. With IPv6, because it's a bigger IP space, there are so many octets that need to be remembered. Though it can be simplified with the techniques available, there can be uh, initial hiccups in that, but that comes with every transformation, right? If I give you an example, if you are somebody, especially in India or even abroad, where you shift from a car which is manually driven to an automatic one, the automatic is very easier to drive, but it initially takes that patience to get used to it. The same is with this. But once you are through automatic cars, I have not seen anyone, at least in my lifetime, who had shifted from automatic again to manual because automatic was not that convenient. So that way, IPv6 some of the things, for example, the address allocation works like a charm. Yes, we will be looking at these aspects. 
the points around summarizations the prime points around ip address the locations are still valid those are design related discussions we will look at those but ipv6 is easier once you are used to it the next thing that we get from this is is ipv6 more secure than ipv4 if you see only this number is changing it is the next version of ipv6 right so from the security standpoint you need to have the same security framework security design security policies in place which you have for ipv4 and get those adapted to ip v6 the only thing uh, that you may see or may cause confusion is that ipsec is incorporated into the control plane for ipv6 but more on this will be later today's focus is to bust some of these myths and the key takeaway from this slide is ipv6 is not less or not more secure it is just different you need to have a security framework in place then some of the customer asked this uh, question as well that will the quality of service work with ipv6 again if you look at the headers for ipv6 as compared to ipv4 it is very much simplified even though it went from 32 bit to 128 bit but still these ipv6 header have some failed which are used to distinguish between the packets and at this point like during these uh, brainstorming discussions with the customer as well we give them the assurance that they can very well take care of their qos needs with ipv6 as well the most obvious and uh, another questions that we get from uh, the customer is does the lack of NAT support in IPv6 reduces security. First of all, there is of course no NAT in IPv6 and NAT was never designed for security. NAT was designed so that we can pop up with IPv4 for some more time because they were running out of space. Right. So it is actually a myth that NAT increases some sort of security because you are hiding your actual addresses behind a NATed IP address. But tell me how many attacks happen on direct IP address? Most of them happen from L4 to L7. They directly target your application. So in this case, as I was saying earlier, IP V6 also need a security framework. So with that, let's just move on. There are certain enhancements also in IPv6. As I was saying that the header is from 32 bit to 128 bit, but the header structure looks very much simple. And 
in IPv6, there are a lot of these extension attributes. Those are introduced. They are not part of the main packet header, but they help to have encryptions, optimized routing, and these headers are actually inserted between IPv6 header and the payload. I am covering this at a very high level because these are very basic sessions. We start from basic and then go to advanced. But if you are interested, I already have a series on SRV6. And in fact, SRV6 use these extensions. They put these routing headers in between. So if you want to understand this, and don't want to wait for further sessions in the series, go ahead and watch the complete series that is there on SRV6. Again, that is also recorded for the beginners in mind. Then we have talked about all these nice things that why somebody needs to move towards IPv6. There are certain challenges as well. Transition to IPv6, as I was saying, it is not only the network, it is not only the security, it is that complete ecosystem that needs to be migrated, that needs staff training, sometimes software upgrade, hardware support, application support right? all these factors need to be considered when moving to ipv6 ipv6 transport migration plan cannot be just network centric yes that can be the first step for that journey network can be made ready but to have the full fledged benefit, the whole ecosystem need to be taken into consideration. And during the migration, one of the famous approach is dual stack transitions, where you have your IPv4 running and then you also enable IPv6. So that your applications continue to work fine on IPv4 and slowly some of them just move towards IPv6. But here also the number of issues that the network team need to look into now have doubled. There may be cases where something is working on IPv4, not working on IPv6. There can be some issues with the network where IPv6 is broken. So there will be some operational headache that will be coming along with it because now the surface had grown. Even your security policies that you have need to evolve also i remember i was working for a service provider where the team for which i was working on have uh, certain domain areas and we were not allowed to access the devices outside of it and uh, then we started enabling IPv6 into our network. And one day I realized that I can log in into those parameter devices with IPv6, whereas my IPv4 access was restricted. So then I highlighted that and we got that fixed. So same way, your security policies also need to take into account when you are moving to IPv6 and have both IPv4 and IPv6 in your network. And then compatibility issues. 
this we will look at uh, in our upcoming session as well where you or a business application owners have certain compatibility issues with ipv6 right not all the applications can be migrated some of them are very legacy right so those type of issues also need to be taken care so with that we have come to an end of this uh, session where i have had busted some of the myths from business leaders as well as network architects point of view i hope you have learned something if not Please to refresh memory on some of the concepts. Feel free to share it with others. And thank you so much uh, for watching this. I hope that it was a good use of your time. Thank you.